Hi, my name is Pamela and I breed British Shorthairs in Perth, Western Australia. I have a passion for cat breeding and I'd love to share my experience and knowledge with you. This channel is designed for new breeders, but if you've been breeding for a while, stick around as you may pick up a tip or two. Now today I wanted to answer a burning question that I get asked all the time. If you have a look on my channel, you'll see that I've answered this question a few times and I get asked a lot on Facebook and in person. And the whole idea behind my YouTube channel, Cat Breeding for Beginners, was to help people answer their questions so that I just answer one question for one person. I'm answering one question for a lot of people and hopefully that will share some information around. And the question that I got asked, get asked a lot is, um, how do I stop my stud cat from spraying? Or how do I stop my stud cat from peeing everywhere? Or how do I deal with the smell of my stud cat? And I think people want me to give them some sort of miracle answer. Another question I get asked as well is, how do I keep my stud cat away from my girl? The answer is stud cats are not pets. They are a different uh, type of cat altogether. We can love them as much as we love our pet cats. We can um, give them as much attention and we can give them absolutely give them as much care. But they are not pets. They need to be kept in an entirely different way because of the nature of what they are, which is entire male cats. They will spray and they will pee on, they will pee on everything and their pee will smell. And I hear often um, people say on forums and things and or other breeders may say this and you've probably heard this as well that oh no no my cat doesn't spray my cat you know he's perfect he lives in the house he lives just like our pet cats in the house and he sleeps on my pillow at night and he co-parents his his kittens and he you know his pee smells like flowers I don't know if they do if that's actually true and sometimes I don't know that it's always true um, they have a unicorn they have a completely rare cat because the rest of us don't have them I certainly do not have anything like that I have cats that um, don't actually actively spray but they still smell um, and I have cats that are absolutely you know will hose down anything going and I've had a lot of stud cats because I've been breeding a long time and I've been breeding um, a color that's unique I was the first breeder in Australia to have that color so in order to breed the cats that I wanted to breed I had to keep a lot of stud cats and so I've had a lot of them over the years a lot of different ones um, from different lines that behave differently some have been really good some have been really dirty um, one boy would every day him and his brother lived together and there was two chairs in their pen and every day he would pee on one chair and poo on the other chair and then the next day he would swap and so his pen was always covered in urine. It was urine was dripping off this chair and there was always poo on the chair. And that was just, he did that every day for a very long time. And that was just his thing. Um, I also remember, you know, I had a young boy that I didn't want to put out into his pen and I kept him inside and um, came home one day. And I went to, when I went out that day, everything was fine. And when I came home, he peed on um, the bed, um, a book that I was reading, the glasses that I was using, uh, a belt that was on the sideboard, he'd peed in the wardrobe in the corner. He'd just gone to town and hosed everywhere in, in the space of an afternoon. Stud cats will do that. That's just how they, they are, it's how they're wired. They're telling the female cats, they're saying to the female cats, um, hello ladies, here I am. And they're telling the boy cats, the other male cats, you know, this is my zone, if you come here, I'm gonna fight you. So they want to spread that perfume as far as they're concerned as far and wide as possible and in a house which is a big open space normally they're just going to go to town they've just got to put it about everywhere um so when you have a stud cat or when you have a stud kitten when you have a kitten that's going to be a stud cat you need to be thinking right from the beginning how am i going to house him because housing is the most important thing about having a stud cat it really really is you need to have it ready to go when he's going to need it otherwise you're going to be spending your time juggling and you're going to be putting him in a situation where he's not going to be happy you can't keep him in a small cage you can't keep him in a bathroom you can't keep him in a place that's stressing him out if he's um, spraying a lot maybe it's because he's being kept you know with entire females that he can he can hear and he can smell and it's making him want to to Put his perfume about for them so you need to think about these kinds of things and you need to be really ready for them you can't put something in the water you can't you know give them an injection you can't 
train them not to do it. It's just part of their nature. If you are lucky enough to get one that doesn't spray, and I have lots that don't spray. I have some that do, but I've had over the years lots that don't. And this, this boy behind me here, Ralphie, he doesn't spray. He's a really good boy. And Bobby that's there in the background, he doesn't spray either. But even those two cats, they stink. They really do. In summer when it's really hot, they have to come into the house and um, we'll put them in one of the bathrooms with their litter trays and they'll use the litter tray. They won't spray, um, they won't spray anywhere. They'll just pee in the litter tray and our whole house stinks of stud cat smell. And my house isn't small, it's pretty big and the whole house stinks of it. And it's just, it's just part of the, their makeup. Um, they're having, you know, still having their testicles does something i'm not don't know the science behind it but it's something about that makes their pee smell really bad and there's no way around it they even if they just use the tray they're going to be really smelly so having them in the house is just really not an option for a stud cat they will also if they are actually going to spray on things they'll start to wreck things so spraying on your couch spraying on your carpet getting it into the underlay into the concrete or the wood floors or if they spray up against um the walls they'll damage things because stud pee is very corrosive it's very damaging as well so you have to think about that and really what it comes down to the answer to the question is how do i stop my stud cat spraying or, or how do i stop his, him smelling you don't it's just really is part of the deal when you have a stud cat you have to assume that that's going to be something that you're going to have to deal with and you have to manage it accordingly um, a couple of things you can maybe do is when you wash their bedding don't have separate bedding just for your stud cats and don't go to town you know soaking it to get every last um, bit of smell out of the bedding if it has some residual odor in it that's fine because it says to them you know it, that's a that's what they want they want it to smell um, if you give them fresh clean you know perfect bedding they're just going to go well this doesn't smell like pee so i'm going to pee on it if it has some pea smell, then maybe there's a chance that they won't spray on it so much. Um, if they're pooing on the floor and they won't poo on their tray, this boy here, this one here, he doesn't spray, he doesn't spray, but he will not poo in the same tray that he will pee in. Um, and really stud cats have some really weird toileting traits. He will poo in an empty plastic tub, an empty plastic tray, but he won't poo in a proper litter tray you'll pee in it which is very good for a stud cat but he he if he doesn't have that empty plastic tray he'll just poo on the floor um, so they'll do that they'll poop in places too and really um, you have to have a good long hard think about whether or not you are actually capable of having a stud cat whether you can manage to deal with having a stud cat there is a lot of extra work involved um, I don't recommend cleaning up after them, you know, every single day. Um, you know, I have cats that, when I've had cats that have actually, you know, sprayed in their pen, Vinny has been desexed recently and he was quite a hose and he has it, he had an area in his pen that was just, you know, like a big puddle of urine pretty much every day. It was his favourite spot that he liked to spray. It was a hammock that was in there and he'd spray on that and it would go down and there'd be a big wet puddle. And if I went every day and hosed that out, it's just going to say to him, do it more. So I didn't clean it out every day. Also, if you clean it out every day, it's just going to make him a little bit stressed. And so I let him, you know, he could pee as much as he wanted. And then once a week, I'd hose it out and go down the drain and we'd start all over again. But I wasn't in there scrubbing it with soap or anything like that. That's um, why my boys are outside in pens like this because it doesn't matter if there's that residual smell. We're in a semi-rural block. There's no one, you know, either side or behind us who it's gonna bother. Um, and so, you know, cleaning them, being too clean can be a problem as well because it might cause them a little bit more stress. It causes them to spray a bit more. Having a really big space is a problem too. Um, I was at a friend's place the other day who has um, her first dud cat and she was finding that he was in a run that was a side of house run, which is also a really good idea if you're in a suburban block. As long as you have to be aware that the neighbours on the other side, you don't want it to be too smelly for them. And I think that was a concern for her. And she said that he's hosing, you know, he's spraying this whole area down a lot and he seems stressed. I said, well, he has too much space. 
He, he wants to put his perfume about. He wants to send that message that this is his space by peeing on it. And you've given him too much space. And he feels the need to, that, to go up and down and spray it all the time. And if you can contain him a little bit smaller space, then he's going to do it less. So she sectioned him off into part of it and um, also put in some, you know, I said, you know, put in a tub in there that he can sit in that's got bedding in it and let him just spray in it. And he did. And um, he's much more comfortable now and um, has reduced, he's not spraying that whole area now. He's spraying in the area that he's in, but it's not the whole area. And so having them in a smaller space, I'm not talking about having that small space, I'm just saying a smaller space is a good way to actually contain them as well because they, they have this natural urge to just pee on everything. So if everything is a big space, that's, that's what they're going to be focused on. So keeping stud cats, it's not for, um, you know, I don't recommend it right at the beginning. If you can get away with having a few girls and using someone else's stud, that's a great way to get started. When you do decide to keep a stud, especially if you have them as a kitten, really be prepared to be ready to um, have housing for them and deal with them from the beginning. And um, don't assume that because you've heard that some other people have these perfect cats that don't smell and don't spray, that yours is going to be like that. Just assume the worst. Assume that you're going to have a really dirty cat who's going to pee on everything and poop on, on the floor, you know, three or four times a day. Um, and then when they don't do that, then you'll think you're lucky because most of them will do that. You know, even like I said, this guy here and his little friend, his little son over there, they're really good cats and really well behaved and they're actually not that dirty at all, but they are still smelly and they still, you know, poop where they shouldn't poop. Um, and when you've got a couple of them, it's a lot to deal with. So I hope that answers the question. I hope that um, I can tell people to come and look at this video and get the answer so that I don't have to keep typing it in for people all the time. Um, have a really good think before you get a stud cat. Just be really prepared. You can't put something in the water. You can't give them something. You can't change them. They are what they are. They're, a, they're not a pet cat. They need to be kept differently to a pet cat. You should love them and give them enrichment and care for them and not leave them just in the, you know, out in a pen in the yard not being looked after. Um, they need to have attention, they need to you know, be treated extra special because they have to sacrifice by being kept the way that they are. So they need more of your love than, than maybe the house cats do. Um, and I have a real soft spot for studs because I do, I have had a lot over the time that I've been a breeder and I have loved them all. The good ones and the bad, the, the smelly ones and the, and the, the clean ones, absolutely. Um, and it's, it is a bit of a, a different thing that we have when we have breeding cats as opposed to having breeding dogs or other animals it is a unique thing that you have to keep them in a special way so be prepared and be willing to accept them for who they are is probably what I'm trying to say okay well I hope you enjoyed that little video and the answer that I've given uh, I'll let you know I have an online course coming up soon so stay tuned for news about that it's going to be called cat breeding 101 with lots of different um, topics from you know right from the start to the end of cat breeding. So hopefully that'll help you if you're new to the hobby, start off on the right foot, which is what I want you to do because I want you to enjoy it. I love it and I want you to enjoy it as much as I do. Okay, bye.